Case there for Chicago Tribune reported anesthesiologist Dr. Corey de Burgrave works 14-hour shifts five or six days a week at University of Illinois Hospital in Chicago. He intubates COVID-19 patients for the ventilator. Some of his patients are in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. He said, I get frustrated when people say stay home for the elderly and more vulnerable populations. No, stay home for yourself, too. It's unpredictable. This virus can hit anyone, and it's difficult to predict who will live and who will die. John Hamilton for National Public Radio reported most coronavirus patients who end up on ventilators go on to die according to several small studies from the U.S., China, and Europe. And many of the patients who continue to live cannot be taken off. Dr. Nagan Hajizade, a pulmonary critical care physician at the Donald and Barbara Zucker School of Medicine at Hofstra Northwell on Long Island, New York, said ventilators are very successful when used to treat common forms of pneumonia. She said we treat patients for several days and then we get the antibiotics into the body and the patient recovers. Unfortunately, with this COVID-associated pneumonia, there are no treatments that we know work for sure. Also, the coronavirus often does a lot more damage to a person's lungs than pneumonia associated with the flu. Hamilton reported all the early research suggests that once coronavirus patients are placed on a ventilator, they will probably need to stay on it for weeks. And the longer patients remain on a ventilator, the more likely they are to die. Another risk from being on a ventilator is the tube carrying oxygen to the lungs provides a pathway for dangerous germs. Many ventilated patients get a new lung infection known as ventilator-associated pneumonia. Rob Quinn Reported for Newser, officials in New York City say up to 80% of COVID-19 patients placed on machines died. Even those who survive after spending a long time on ventilators are likely to suffer lingering after effects, including muscle atrophy and cognitive decline. But with some seriously ill patients, ventilators are their own only chance of survival. Dr. Catherine Dreger, internal medicine physician and a clinical assistant professor of medicine at Georgetown University wrote for the New York Times, it breaks my heart that Americans who get sick enough to need them won't know what desperate situations they face, nor will they understand what ventilators can do to help and what they can never fix. Ventilators keep oxygen going to the brain, the heart, and the kidneys, all while we hope the infection will ease and the lungs will begin to improve. These machines cannot fix the terrible damage the virus is causing. As disease and damage progresses, the heart begins to struggle, begins to fail. For some, the kidneys fail completely, which means a dialysis machine is also needed to survive. Nobody can tolerate being ventilated like this without sedation. COVID-19 patients are put into a medically induced coma before being placed on a ventilator. Being on a ventilator for weeks and amount of sedation needed for COVID-19 patients can cause profound complications, physical and cognitive. All this does not mean we shouldn't use ventilators to try to save people. It just means we have to ask ourselves some serious questions. What do I value about my life? If I will die, if I am not put in a medical coma and placed on a ventilator, do I want that life support? If I do choose to be placed on a ventilator, how far do do I want to go? Do I want to continue on the machine if my kidneys shut down? Do I want tubes feeding me so I can stay on the ventilator for weeks? All over the country, patients and their families are being asked to make these difficult decisions at a moment's notice while they are on the verge of dying. 
if you don't want to be put in a coma and placed on life support, let your family know. Talk to them now. Choosing not to go on a ventilator means the assurance of palliative care that helps you to be cared for and kept as comfortable as possible in your dying. This is not to suggest you not go on a ventilator, but that you think seriously now about your choices and what you want.